Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through how many carbon-13 NMR spectra peaks you can expect to get for different isomers of the same molecule. For instance here I've got 1,4-dimethylbenzene and I've also got 1,2-dimethylbenzene. Now for the 1,4-dimethylbenzene we've got a line of symmetry just down here and what that means is the two CH3s on either side these are going to be equivalent to each other. They're absolutely indistinguishable from each other, so they're just going to give one peak. Now, right next to those, you've got the carbons here. Either side of the molecule, straight facing each other like that, and we can see that if we folded up this molecule, they would match up to each other, and so they're equivalent as well, and that means that this is just going to give one peak. So here we've got the yellows are giving one peak just there, and the blues are giving one peak at the moment as well, despite in total containing four carbons. And it's because of that equivalence. The final peak that we're going to see for this one, so we are just going to see three peaks for this molecule. I'm going to do it in yellow again, but I've got these four carbons all around the middle here, and the reason that these would all just give one peak is because there is another line of symmetry through our molecule just there, and those CHs all around the middle, all four of them, are absolutely equivalent to each other, so they are just going to give one peak. So in total for this molecule, we can expect to see three peaks in the carbon-13 NMR spectra. For the molecule on the right, the 1,2-dimethylbenzene, for this one, we can expect to see, because of our mirror line, in almost the exact same way as the other one, we can expect to see, if I show that mirror line on, you're going to get one peak for your CH3s. So just here, like before, we would get one peak for those. There's still a line of symmetry on our molecule. You would also expect to see another peak for these carbons here. For the same reason as before, they're equivalent to the ones across from them, so they would give a peak we would see a third peak for these two carbons. They're completely separate from any other carbons on there, but they are equivalent to each other, so they're just going to give one peak for the two of them. And then finally, we'd expect to see a fourth peak for these two carbons here, equivalent to each other, but different from all the others because of that line of symmetry and the lack of another line of symmetry. And so in total for this particular molecule, we can expect to see four carbon-13 NMR spectra peaks. So taking you through that one nice and slowly then, hopefully that shows you how you can end up, if you consider symmetry at various different points of the whole molecule or separate points of the molecule, how we can end up with equivalent environments and that can correlate to the number of peaks we can expect to get. So let's have a look at a different example. Okay, so we've got these two molecules this time, which are both versions of pentanone. The one on the left is pentanthrione, and the one on the right is pentantuone. Now, how many peaks are we going to see for the one on the right this time? Let's start with the one on the right. So for the one on the right, we can expect to see a peak for this CH3 down the far left-hand side. We can expect to see a different peak for this carbon just here. I can expect to see a third separate peak for this one. Now that's a CH2, and you might think the next carbon along, well that's another CH2 on the same molecule, surely they're just going to give the same peak, surely they're equivalent, absolutely not. They're going to give their own peak as well. And finally then, we would get another peak on the far right hand side, and you might think, well CH3, there's another CH3 at the other end of the molecule, are they equivalent? Absolutely not. There's no line of symmetry on this molecule, and so there are no equivalent environments, and so you can expect to see a grand total for this particular um, isomer, of the pentanone, so this is going to be pentan 2 one, remember, you can expect to see five separate peaks. Now for the other molecule, for the pentan 3 one you can expect to see one peak for this carbon just here. You can expect to see another peak for the two CH2s. So this CH2 and this CH2, they're going to give one peak. And that's because, unlike for the other molecule, but similar to our last set of examples, there is a line of symmetry down our molecule just here. So these CH2s are equivalent to each other. Finally, you can expect to see a third peak for this CH3 and this CH3 here. They are absolutely equivalent to each other. And so you're going to get three peaks in total for the pentanthrione because it's actually got some equivalent environments. 
Our next example is going to use different isomers of the molecular formula C5H12. On the left, I've got 2,2-dimethylpropane, and on the right, I've got pentane. So they're obviously um, different isomers of each other. The one on the left is branched, and the one on the right is a straight chain. But how many peaks would I expect to see for each of them? So for the one on the left, let's have a look at this one first, you can expect to get a carbon-13 NMR peak for this carbon in the middle. And you wouldn't actually be able to register the presence of that carbon on proton NMR because that carbon doesn't have any hydrogens connected to it, which is an important reason why we would run uh, carbon-13 NMR alongside proton NMR in analyzing a sample. Now, you would only get one other peak for this molecule. And the reason for that is these CH3s are all absolutely equivalent to each other all the way around. So the total number of peaks for this particular molecule is just two. For the molecule on the right, however, there is a line of symmetry. So we've got our line of symmetry right down the middle like so. So we can expect a peak for this CH2 just here. I can also expect to get a peak for these two. These two CH2s, they're different from the CH2 in the middle, but they're the same as each other. And then finally then, I can expect to get a peak for these CH3s on either end. They are absolutely the same as each other, but different from every other carbon inside the structure. So they're equivalent, but they are different from the other, so they give their own peak. And so for this particular molecule on the right-hand side here, I can expect to get three peaks in total. And so again, these were both isomers of C5H12, but you can see how we'll get different carbon-13 NMR spectra peaks. And also we mentioned that for the one on the left, the yellow peak that I've identified just there, that actually wouldn't register a peak on proton NMR, which is very important. For the final example here, we're going to be looking at isomers of the molecular formula C3H6. And what we can see is we've actually changed the functional group entirely. The molecule on the left is propene and the molecule on the right is cyclopropane. Now, here what we do have are a complete difference in the number of carbon-13 NMR spectra peaks. For instance, for the molecule on the left, you could expect to see a peak for this carbon just here. You can also expect to see a peak for this carbon just here, a completely separate peak because it's completely different from the other one. Although it's in the same double bond, it would be a different carbon-13 environment. And finally, you can expect to see another peak for this carbon environment just here, the CH3, quite plainly different from the other two, which were slightly less obvious as different uh, carbon environments from each other. And so the total number of peaks for the molecule on the left, for the alkene version of C3H6, is going to be three, three peaks in total. Now this is where it contrasts to the one on the right quite a lot. For the one on the right, every carbon is completely equivalent to the others. And so here, you can expect to get a grand total of just one carbon-13 NMR spectra peak. What a big difference. And this is worth bearing in mind for any non-branched alkane structures, which are cyclic like this one. And obviously that needs to be then a structural isomer of an alkene on the other side if we were comparing isomers to each other. And you can see here, if you've got a cyclic and it's a complete ring light, so it's got no branching on, then it's only ever going to give one peak. And that's a bit of a trick the examiner could use. I hope this gives you some experience looking for how many carbon-13 environments you can expect to see for different molecules. And it gives you a good look at how um, compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures, so structural isomers, can have a different number of peaks. I'll leave you to the rest of the Upper Six Organic Playlists, and until next time, happy revising.